Hello, it's Jimmy here at Orleans. I'm looking at a Range Rover Evogue. So this is a 2020 model and it's got an engine light on over there. Mileage is 30,000 miles. So I'm going to use the launch Euro Tab 3 scan tool here. Okay, we've got it loaded up. We'll read the fault codes that we have. It's a P2002-92 code. Um, I don't think I've seen that code on these vehicles, on this particular vehicle here. Uh, if we do a code search on it. So I can't see any Vogue's here popping up with any sort of information. Okay, we're going to go back to live data, data stream. And we'll just take off a few items. Okay, we've got some live data for the DPF. We have soot mass at 16 grams, which is high. Um, low pressure exhaust. Low pressure EGR, basically, uh, is at zero bar. Particle filter is at zero, but it doesn't tell me what unit it's reading that in. Um, which is going to be a problem. Now, if I accelerate it up. We're getting one, two, three. Now you see on this one I can change that to something I'm familiar with, which is HPAs. But I can't, I can't get this to a reading that I that I'm familiar with. So I don't even know what that's measuring that in. It's. Uh, I'd say the number one would be sort of 10 millibars, let me get that screen to focus. I'd say number one is probably 10 millibars, two, three, four, so 40 millibars. So we're getting sort of 30 millibars at 3000 RPM. Okay, so those numbers, if we have sort of 30 millibars at 3000 RPM, uh, the DPF could be damaged, but I'm not sure if that's the reading we're getting, so I'm going to have to try go under the vehicle and connect up a manometer and see what sort of reading we're getting on something a little bit more accurate. Okay, so I've got the vehicle raised up here on some ramps and we're going to just go underneath. Okay, so this has got a under tray cover underneath here. So we're going to have to get all of these 150 bolts off. Okay, so I'm under the vehicle, uh, just up there, if we can see it. Let me just try and get it in view of the camera. Right there, we have the DPF pressure sensor. I've just disconnected the clip there from it, if you can see. Just there. Okay, so I've just disconnected that hose there from the sensor. Now I've connected to the DPF hose here, my my own hose that I've got, which is attached to my manometer. So we're going to start the vehicle up and then read the manometer, see what it's reading. Okay, so we've got 4.8 millibars on idle, which seems okay. Okay, so now I'm going to test the DPF pressure sensor and I've got a medivac gauge here connected to it and we're going to read the live data as I'm increasing the pressure on here. So we'll go up to around about 50 on the gauge and we've got exactly the same on there. So testing with that gauge has shown me that the sensor is working correctly. Um, testing with the manometer has showed me that the 
pressure is the same I'm getting on a manometer as it is on the live data so the sensor is reading correctly um, all I can see so far is that the DPF pressure on revs is slightly too low okay so what it looks like there not massively but it is slightly under under the numbers for the DPF so it looks like the DPF is damaged which is common on these anyway um, I've not seen the P2002 code so this is a similar code, the same code you get on the Audis um, that blocks the EGR cooler now I've, I, usually on these if the EGR cooler is blocked uh, you get a P049B code which is different um, it's, it depends how the vehicles are set up each car is completely different um, now this is a newer model which again it's, it's slightly changed so but I don't think it's the EGR cooler um, it's just like the, the DPF pressure is too low which I've made a video on the older model not so long ago but it was a different code so if I go to the tailpipe on this I'm not sure if you can see wow that's probably the worst I've ever seen sorry so I'm trying to get the camera to focus I'm not sure if you can see that but jeez that's a lot that is a lot of soot just from a single wipe so if I go to the floor here look at that that's just by tapping my finger chunks of soot there coming off so I'd say that DPF has definitely had it ok so I do notice that on some of my videos I'm, I'm speaking in terms that most mechanics are going to under, understand but so the reason behind for people who don't understand the reason behind checking that with my finger is if your DPF is working you shouldn't get soot particles coming out of the tailpipe that's the whole point of a DPF it's a diesel particle filter so it captures the soot filters captures the soot particles and it then burns them off into ash and a lot of people say to me oh what's the point of a DPF because it captures the soot and then it does a regen and kicks it all out it doesn't kick all of the soot particles out what a regen does is it burns those those soot particles into a less harmful ash and it still traptures, traps the ash in the DPF so you're not kicking out if you do see smoke coming out that is just smoke you know it's not soot particles it's, compl it's a completely different thing and also I'll mention if people say about deleting their DPFs and stuff you know some people will go down that route if you delete your DPF will your emissions fail it won't fail your emissions surprisingly because like I said again it just captures soot your DPF captures soot it doesn't lower your emissions your catalyst is the job of reducing emissions so when you delete your DPF it doesn't affect your emissions okay now this vehicle has been to a dozen garages sorry not a dozen it's been to one or two okay um, and sorry I've got, got confused with my last Land Rover there I was looking at the guy said it was back sort of 12 to 14 times at the dealership but this one has been to uh, to the dealership and it's been to um, one of his friend's garages. Um, but each time they turn the code off, the light lasts, you know, five to ten minutes or a couple of minutes and then it comes back. So what I'm going to do for him is, as a temporary job, I'm just going to get that soot loading down so I can either reset the DPF um, or you can do a, a dynamic region. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set off a dynamic region on this just because I'm not worried about damage in the DPF. It's already damaged. I'm just going to set off a dynamic region and just out of curiosity I want to see if the dyna dynamic region will will work and if we get the soot loading down then it should get a little bit longer out of it before the light comes on maybe a couple hundred miles or so. So again this is a newer model I can't remember if we're going to have the actual functions in here for this um, they have seem to have changed a few bits and pieces again uh, let's have a look in exhaust emissions here on the special functions again this is the launch or tab 3 from launchtech.co.uk uh, diesel particle filter replacement or a dynamic regeneration I'm going to do the dynamic regeneration on this one to see if, if it will lower the soot which is strange again on this because if the, the soot loading is high but the pressure is too low, which doesn't correlate. If the soot loading is high, then your DPF pressure should also be high. If your DPF pressure is low, your soot loading should be low. But it's their opposite on this. So we've got 16 grams. Uh, to come. So that's it said there's an error there. We might try that again and see if we can get it to work. Okay, we're going to take it on a drive and see if we can get these soot loading down. 
so I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but it dropped straight away from 16 grams down to to zero, and it said it was complete. Um, so I'm back on the data stream now, just having a, keeping an eye on the grams of soot, just see how they're moving. So it didn't, the region didn't drop down slowly, it just dropped rapidly back down to zero. Um, and it said it was complete. Okay, we're going to do sort of a 10 mile journey in the vehicle, see where the soot mass lies at the end. So we're on 0 0.13 now. Okay, so we're at 0 0.279 after a drive. So it's not increasing rapidly. Now if we come back to read the fault codes, we can see the fault code hasn't come back. So we will now finish up, I think. Okay, so that's a finish on this one. So end diagnosis is uh, the DPF is damaged and it needs a new one. So I think we'll do a little bit of a chat here at the end of this video, which I haven't done in a very long time, I'll be honest. These vehicles, um, now I'll be honest, it is a lovely looking car, um, nice looking car for your wife or whatever, but just the the system on these, the, the DPF system is, is, in my opinion, now I'll say, um, it's just not fit for purpose. I've been seeing customers one guy came to me last few weeks ago. Um, I don't. I don't really get a lot of people come to me with cars that are less than a year old or two that are under warranty. But this guy came to me because he got tired of going to Land Rover. He went there three times and had a new DPF. And he came to see me because his DPF problem came back again a few months later. Uh, it's a year and a half old. Done like eighteen thousand miles. And his DPF again was damaged the same as this one, and it already had a replacement three times before this. So it just makes you think, like, how are these cars even fit for purpose, you know, this, this DPF system. Now, what I will say is the older version of these, with the 2.2 .2 engine that you get from the Ford Transit, they were a lot more reliable. Um, they didn't have any of these issues um, with the DPF. So I think if you were looking at one, although they are getting a bit older now, um, the older 2.2 .2 Evogue is a lot more reliable. It's the same engine you get from the Fords, Transits, uh, etc., a few different vehicles. They're fitted in, but that engine and that DPF system is a lot more reliable than these new two liter ingeniums. Um, and what I don't ever, I don't ever support people doing DPF deletes. But I'll be honest, with one of these vehicles, I think if I had one, you'd probably have to go looking down that route, um, just because you know there's people that are paying sort of three thousand pound to have a new dpf fitted and before the year's out it needs to be replaced again it's just it's it's just not a very good not a very good system and if you're going to pay for something to be fixed you know it should last you know a dpf should normally last you a couple hundred thousand miles i mean my van's done 270 and it's, it's still got the original dpf on there it's still working um at least this car had thirty thousand miles on it um the guys had it three months now it needs a new dpf we don't even know the history of uh, of that car if it's already had a dpf before which it likely probably has known the known these vehicles and known what i'm looking at um i've cleaned some of these now and you know i've had a couple of them the problems come back after a month or two unfortunately you know it's i don't really even like doing the dpf cleans on these anymore even when they do need one because the problem comes back and you just end up with a customer that's not happy you know they've paid you to clean it and the problems come back so you know if they don't understand they just think you haven't done the job correctly when in fact you have but it's it's just a, a, a crappy design end of story really um but we'll finish the story there and i forgot to say i'll see you on the next video